Praise God, and good morning, everybody. As you stand for the call to worship, put your hands together as we prepare to worship our Lord in the beauty of holiness. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let us join our voices, singing praise and giving thanks to our God this morning. scripture reading followed by the morning prayer. The scripture reading will come from Deaconess Martha Brown and our morning prayer will be by Sister Priscilla Majors. Good morning, Third Baptist. Good morning. The scripture is taken from Proverbs 31, verses 25 through 29. Proverbs 31, verses 25 through 29. Has everyone found the scripture? If so, please say, praise the Lord. 
Proverbs 31, verses 25 through 29, the King James Version, and the Word of God reads, Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, and her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. We pray that these words manifest in our hearts and lead us in the direction of the will to carry on God's word. Praise be unto our God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you once again for waking us up this morning. We thank you for waking us in our right mind. We asking you, Father God, to get in the midst of this service. Asking you, Father God, for the blessings of those who are here, those that are not here. Thanking you for the ones that will be here. Now, Father God, I ask that you watch over us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. I ask, Father God, that you bless the woman to bring the word. I ask, Father God, that you bless in a mighty way. I ask, Father God, that you bless from the front to the back. I ask, Father God, to bless us as we, uh, as a whole in this church. We ask these and all blessings in no other name but the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Next, we will have our welcome, followed by our notices and announcements. Our welcome is coming from Sister Verone Chamberlain Grant, and our announcements will be by Sister Tara Shealy. Welcome everyone, welcome. We the members of Third Baptist Church gladly welcome you to our church, to our church home. If you are seeking Christ, you will find him here. If you are sorrowing, you will find comfort. If you are a troubling spirit, you will find a blessing of peace. If you are discouraged, you will find grace and hope. If you are friendless, you will find companionship and Christian love, that these and all blessings may be your portion. Now I pray, amen. But one thing, one thing at Third Baptist that we do, if you have any visitors, can you please stand? If you don't, it's okay, but we, we want to also give you a great hug, big hug to say, welcome to Third Baptist Church. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Um, I will be doing the announcements today. Adult Sunday School and Youth Sunday is conducted every Sunday at 8.45 a.m. Um, minister leaders, please continue to coordinate with your ministry. Deacons will meet on May 21st, immediately following worship service. A prayer virgin will be conducted on May 27th at Third Baptist. On May 28th, we will observe our 181th anniversary during our worship service. A church meeting will be held on June 12th at 6 p.m. Please come out. Please remember to wear your mask while in church. We thank you for your compliance. Pledges are being obtained, obtained by the Southside VA Unified Shallow Associated Shallow Annual Session will be conducted on June 21 and 22 at Olive Branch Baptist Church in Dinwiddie at 9.30 a.m until 4 p.m. The Queen pageant will be held on Thursday on the 22nd of June. Our very own Kiyan
Donna Scott will be representing Third Baptist also. Could you stand, Kiyata? May is National Mental Health Awareness Month. The theme is you are more than enough. Bible study is held on every Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Please see Deacon Ron Thompson for further details. Stand up, Ron Thompson. <laughs> Where he at? <laughs> Please continue to remain. Please continue to remain in prayers for those who have suffered sickness, loss, or bereavement, or have been impacted by the shooting and incident of violence throughout the world. I'm trying to make sure I got everything I'm supposed to say. <laughs> um, I would like to see. I would like with Kevin McCullough come up here. Um, these are our notice and, and announcements. Please govern yourself accordingly. Thank you. Morning, Third Baptist. Third Baptist, is God just good? Is he good? So we put our hand together for a hand clap. Of Praise just for God, for being a just good God. Amen. 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 Could I have all women, if you are able, if only if you're able, if you're able to stand, will you please stand? All women, if you're able to stand, would you please stand? Saints, let's give the women a hand, clap the praise. Women, will you remain standing? Will you please remain standing? On behalf of the deacons, men ministry, and all men here at Third Baptist Church, we address these words of our, to our women of God, our sisters and mothers here at Third Baptist Church. As God has brought us together one more time to celebrate this day of recognition to the mothers in his, la his land. We want to thank God for this opportunity and for his grace and mercy. We don't take it for granted the work that our mothers do on a daily task, the daily sacrifices, patience, long suffering, and prayer. We know, we all know that without mothers that we would not be here today. Amen? Amen. So on this day, we would like to just recognize all mothers, stepmothers, foster mothers, mentors, grandmothers, or anyone who is standing in the gap as a role model or for a mother. Words just can't express the appreciation that you do and the limit that you go through. And we would like to let you know that it does not go unrecognized. Can we give these women a hand? Clap of praise. <laughs> <clears throat> lastly, lastly, many have experienced the loss of a mom, grandmother, or that special someone who has set the example for you as a youth during your younger years. God has given us something that we call today as memories. As this day continues to go forward, you can continue to hold on to those memories as a special gift and token. So let us now take a moment of silence for the mothers that has gone on before us for their sacrifice and their leadership that they have passed down and embedded into you all today. If we could take a moment of silence. As you continue on this life journey in Jesus Christ, 
My God continue to may God continue to bless you and keep you, keep you all, keep you all with his strength, wisdom, and his peace. Finally, again on this day, on behalf of the deacons, men of ministry, and all men here at Third Baptist Church, we would like to give you all a small token on this Mother's Day. May your day be prosperous and be blessed. And upon leaving the service today, we ask that you pick the gifts up either from the front door or the door to my left, your right, once service is over. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Have a good day. History helps us understand how things in the past made things the way they are today. And with that being said, we will next have our moment in history by, presented by Sister Sharon Bullock. Good morning, church. Following the departure of John Jasper from Third Baptist Church in 1866, this old ship of Zion was pastored by remarkable men of God, namely Reverend Luther Anderson Green, Reverend E.T. Jackson, Reverend Riggins, Reverend Goodwin, and Reverend Kizzy. In 1943, Reverend Earl Redford Knox was called to pastor Third Baptist Church he immediately began doing all that he could to help the church. Under his leadership, new construction was started on the church. His wife, Mrs. Emma L. Knox, was a great Sunday school teacher and worked closely with the young people of the church. Reverend Knox served Third Baptist Church until 1959. On February 8, 1960, Reverend George L. Williams was called to pastor this old ship of Zion. At that time, the church was located on the corner of Rock Street and Lavender Lane. It was old and deteriorating, and under the leadership of Reverend George L. Williams, the congregation was able to purchase the former Wesley Methodist Church, located at 630 Halifax Street. On November 5, 1961, Third Baptist Congregation moved to its new location. And once again, this old ship of Zion was without leadership. However, in 1981, Reverend Willie Edward Dickerson was called to pastor. His installation service was held on February 7, 1982, and under his leadership, several organizations were formed. Among these were the George L. Williams Memorial Circle, the Young Men's Usher Board, and the Male Chorus. He developed many meaningful and lasting relationships between pastor and people. In 1996, Reverend Dickerson was called to pastor the Rising Star Baptist Church in Branchville, Virginia. He enjoyed 22 years of leading God's people along with his wife, First Lady Dickerson. The Lord has blessed us with remarkable men of God who led and cared for his flock. Men who have given their best and who have now gone on from labor to reward. To God be the glory. Thank you. Amen. Church, what time is it? Time. Deacons and ushers take charge.
Father, we thank you, Lord God, for these tithes and offerings. We ask, Lord, that it may be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. a hand clap of praise for ministering to our spirits through song and instruments. We will now have the introduction of our guest minister by Deaconess Constance Scott, followed by the next demonic selection, then the word of God for, to fill us up. Good morning, Third Baptist Church. My task this morning is to introduce our speaker for the hour. Minister Mar Monica H. Frisbee is a native Washingtonian who grew up in Blackstone, Virginia, attended and graduated from Nottoway County School System, where she is now employed as the COVID wellness liaison for the county. Minister Frisbee loves her family, husband Ronald Lee Frisbee, six daughters and six grandchildren, her mother, Lucia Campbell, and two brothers. Got to catch my breath. Got me moving. <laughs> Minister Frisbee is an associate minister at Sella Creek Baptist Church in Blackstone, Virginia. Was licensed February 2020 where she serves in various ministries. A Dort Sunday School teacher, Daughters in Christ, Educational Committee, Pulpit Committee, and Adult Ministry. Minister Frisbee is a lifelong learner who completed her Master of Arts in Executive Leadership from Levity University, August 2022, and will continue classes at Liberty and religious studies. She is a very active in her community and even volunteers on a state level with ESGR, Employees of the Guard and Reserve, as their vice chair, other organizations, board member, Life Changing Community Development Corporation, board member, HELP organization, helping every life prosper. Blackstone Zoning Committee, board member, Blackstone Chamber of Commerce. Minister Frisbee, favorite scriptures are Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron, and one person sharpens another. First Thessalonians 5, 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as you are already doing with all said and done, Minister Frisbee wants you to know that she loves the Lord 
and his people as God has gifted her with the mission of connecting God's people to God's word and to live a life that is built on the promises of God's word. The next voice after the next selection, the next voice will be none other than Minister Monica H. Brisby. Thank you.
Good morning, good morning, Third Baptist. I am honored to be standing before you on this Mother's Day 2023. And so to Reverend Cherry and to every minister, every reverend, every digging, every trustee, every member of Third Baptist, I say thank you for the opportunity to come before you once again and break bread that we can go to the Lord uh, with each other. And so I, I truly thank and praise God for uh, my cousin Gwen, for Miss Sheila, for my husband, Ron Frisbee, being in the house on today um, to just give me some support. But I knew I was coming to Third Baptist, so I was gonna be all right. I've made some friends here. I got some friends here, and it's nothing like this journey called life to have friends in places. And so I thank and I praise God. And so I am going to be in uh, Psalms 31, Psalms 31, verses 7 through 8, as I go to God in prayer. 
Lord God, we thank you and we praise you this morning. We come before you this morning, Lord God, just to give you honor and to give you praise, Lord God. Lord God, we ask this morning, Lord God, that you, Lord God, would hear our prayers, Lord God. Lord God, that you would allow us to ah, come into this place, Lord God, and be filled by you, Lord God, by your word, Lord God, that we can continue on this journey called life, Lord God. Lord God, allow your Holy Spirit to do what it is that he needs to do in this place on today. Lord God, that he would fill each and every one of us up, Lord God, but not only fill us, Lord God, but fill us until we overflow, Lord God, that it may go into the saucer, Lord God, that we would be able to pour into somebody else, Lord God. Lord God, we ask right now that your Holy Spirit would lead God and direct your people today and forevermore. Lord God, I ask that you hide Monica behind your cross, Lord God, that none of her, Lord God, is seen or heard, Lord God, but all of you, Lord God, is felt, Lord God. Lord God, that we would know on today that we've had an encounter with you and none other, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you. We give you honor and we give you glory. And so I, I, I move into my scripture, but I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you to my covering, to Pastor Bats, who is here for a moment, and he didn't want me to call him out, but I think and I praise God for this man, because God has allowed him, even though I'm not at his church, he has licensed me, he has ordained me, and whenever he can support me, he does. And so I think and I praise God for him being in the place for a moment <laughs> as we go to God's word. And it is Psalms 31. I will be reading from the New English Translation, verses 7 and 8. And it reads as thus, I will be happy and rejoice in your faithfulness because you notice my pain and you are aware of how distressed I am. You do not deliver me over to the power of the enemy. You enable me to stand in a wide open place. And so I think and I praise God because God has a sense of humor and I enjoy his sense of humor. And, and, and my title of the sermon today is, Are You Happy? And so when the babies got up and started saying, ha singing happy in Jesus, I said, okay, God, I, I, I'm in the right place. You know, because I always look to know that I am giving his people what it is that he desires because it is none of me but all of him as I stand before you today. And I truly thank and praise God for allowing me to know that I'm on the right page and I'm in the right place on today. And so I say happy Mother's Day to every mother, mother figure, godmom, stepmom, any kind of way that you've been a mom because it takes all of us in this world, in this day and time to step up to the plate to do what it is that God has called us to do. And so as I move on, we all want to be happy, but sometimes trying to find happiness can be a struggle. Oftentimes we search for it in all the wrong places or ways to answer. The answer is much simpler. The answer is just God. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Psalms 44, 15. Scripture guides us to true happiness through knowing the promises in God's word. As we celebrate today on this Mother's Day, God has allowed me to see that this holiday brings about an array of emotions. And, and, and I can't say that he's always pricked my heart and allowed me to see that there's a lot of emotions. There's, there, there, there's people that's hurting. There's people that's going through all kinds of things. And it's not just because their mother is not here on earth right now. The, the, the role as a mother can be very hard because as we try to raise our children to be God-fearing and do what it is that God would have them to do, I, I can say they don't always do what it is that uh, we would like for them to do. They don't always follow what it is that God's word say, but nor did we. 
And so with that, we have to give them some grace, just like God gives us grace in the midst of whatever it is that we're going through. And so as we celebrate on today, every mother and mother figure in this place, we're here to find happiness, okay? Regardless of what this motherhood journey has been like, as parents, we always want the best for our children and those connected to us, and maybe even those not connected to us, because if we have some that are in education or have retired out of education, that's a whole nother set of children that you didn't birth, you're not related to, but you're connected to them. And so with that, we know that we want to say thank you for all that you do in helping to bring the next generation through. And that's however hard it may be. So life is short, and because life is short, we have to decide that we will live this life the way God has designed for it to be. Living for God is the only way to make your life worthwhile, purposeful, and meaningful. And so our desire to be happy our desire to be happy, Psalms 31, 7, the A clause say, I will be happy and rejoice in your faithfulness. And with that, we find ourselves here in the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, we know that God created the Garden of Eden. And he gave them everything that they needed, everything that they would want. But guess what? It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. And so they, within themselves, would allow the voices that they hear to tempt them to yet do more, to want to eat from a place that they had been forbidden to eat from. And so I tell you, with that one sin, we have struggled. We have struggled to regain our sense of happiness. And we have experienced all kinds of things. But I will say that even in the midst of Adam and Eve and the struggle that we have in this life, we can hold on to our happiness. God gives us everything we need to be happy. But you know what? There are times when we want more. And we have to realize that is this God or is this good? And if it's just good without God, we don't need it. And so we have to learn that regardless of what happens in life, God wants us to be genuinely happy. And not that faking it through the hard stuff in life happy, because you know what? We can show up in church on Sunday, and we can put that smile on our face, and we can think that we're okay. But at the end of the day, when we get back home and we look at ourselves in the mirror, we realize that guess what? We were faking it, that we were not real. We, we, we were doing what it is that religion has taught us to do, but not what it is that God has called us to do. And so with that, we have to know that wherever it is and whatever it is that is, we're going through, because sometimes we want to know, is the good news truly good news? for my actual, everyday, often difficult, sometimes painful, typical, crazy, real life. You know, I'm talking about real life. When we're not sitting in church, when we at home and, and the husband don't want to act right and the wife don't want to act right and the children don't want to listen to nothing you have to say. That kind of life. That life that we live outside of this building. And so we have to know that God's grace is sufficient in the massive and the minute things of life. That his grace is sufficient. That God is faithful. Even when Adam and Eve did not do what it was that God had called them to do, he was still faithful unto them. He adapted what it was that he really wanted for them, and he made another way out of nowhere. And so even on today, when we are not as faithful as we ought to be, ah, God is still there. And he makes a way out of no way. In spite of who 
we can be sometimes. How we can be sometimes. In church on Sunday, but by Sunday evening, a little messy. It is what it is, but guess what? If we're going to get it right, if we're going if, if to stand for who it is that God has desired for us to be, we got to get it right. We got to know. God unashamedly enticed us to seek happiness, joy, and pleasure, whatever you want to call it. In him, uh, his word says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And in and, and his presence is a fullness of joy, and at his right hands are pleasure forevermore. We're supposed to want pleasure. We're supposed to want to be happy. We're supposed to have the joy of the Lord. And so those joys, those joys allow us to know where our treasures are stored. And the greatest treasure is what you love the most. For where your treasure is, there is your heart. And so we have to glorify our treasures by the fact that that object of pleasure, to know that God is not indifferent about your joy. It is a big deal to him. Your pleasure in God is the measure of how much of a treasure he is to you. And so, you know, as some things come by prayer and some things come by fasting, but we know that we have to pray because he wants us to be happy. And because, guess what, he notices our pain. He, he's aware of when we are distressed. He's aware of when things are bothering us. Because guess what? All of us are different. He made each one of us different. So what doesn't bother you might bother me. Or it may bother the next person. Somebody else can be like, uh, uh, it's okay. But at the same time, we have to know that guess what? We deal with emotional pain. And so when, 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 when Reverend Sherry said to me this morning that this month is uh, 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 mental health, I said there again, okay, God, there you go, because I couldn't realize why he had me to have this in my sermon. But emotional pain is a pain that hurts and originates from a non-physical source. Sometimes this emotional distress is a result of actions of others, of others. Not even pain that we've caused ourselves. But don't get it twisted because sometimes we cause ourselves enough pain. But at the hand of others, we can have a result of regret, grief, and loss. And with that being said, you know, I, I, I travel to Genesis 16. Are you happy that God sees you? He sees you. For who you are. And, and so we're here in, in, in chapter 16 and, and, and we, we, we are here with Hagar. Hagar is Ishmael's mom. He, he, she is the, the mother of Abraham's first child. Not the promised child, but his first child. Only because Sarah couldn't wait for, for God's promise to come to pass, she thought she would hurry the process along. And so Hagar is here and, and, and she's pregnant because she has been allowed to be with Abraham. And once she's in this state, I said hurt by somebody else, okay, she realizes that she's in a place that she really doesn't want to be in. That's how we are as moms sometimes. We're in a place that we really don't want to be in. But there's no way out. And so guess what? We have to pray and we have to know that God is with us and that he sees us. He sees what we go through. He understands our distress. And with that being said, you know, now when we feel invisible, when we feel forgotten by everyone, the one who sees us loves us. And he watches over us. He sees our struggle, and they're not invisible to him. And so here, Hagar was going to run away. She was running away because uh, she could, just couldn't take what she had to endure, being at the hand of Sarah. 
because Sarah, even though it was her idea to let Hagar be with Abraham, once everything that she thought she wanted happened, she no longer liked it. Hmm. That can be us on some days. We, we think we want something until God really give us what it is that we thought we wanted. And then we find ourselves trying to run away from what it is that we have. And so here we have Hagar here, and, and she's run away. And she encounters the angel of the Lord, and, and he sends her back. But he makes a promise to her that through her bloodline, she's going to be okay. That everything is going to work out in his will in his word, the way that God, because what we have to understand is that even though we may ask for things and God may allow it, he's going to cover us. He's going to cover us. He sees us and he knows all about us. And so with that being said, you know, because God seen her, hey, God declared, you are a God of seeing. Truly, here, I have been seen by God. And so I, I need each and every one of you to understand that God sees you. He sees you. He understands everything that you're going through, everything that you're dealing with. And just like the good father that he is, uh, even though he sees it, you know how we do with our children, we may know something is going on, but until... They come to us and ask us. We, we try to let them figure it out on their own. We try to let them figure it out on their own. And so that's how our Father is with us. We need to go to him, taking everything it is that bothers us, everything it is that keeps us from that relationship with him. Because regardless of whether it's on your job, in your home, or in the church, there are things that bother us sometimes. And for us to be the best people that God have called us to be, we've got to get that thing straight. We've got to go to God and we've got to give it to him and let him fix it. Because guess what? At the end of the day, we have no power. When we are weak, he is strong. And so therefore, we have to know that God is there. And so as we go through the Bible, we understand that God was there and, and Jesus was there and he's seen all of the people that uh, we probably would have passed up. He, you know, he healed the leopard, he, he healed the blind, the demon possessed, and, 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 and even had a conversation with the woman at the well. Throughout the scriptures, it seems that God chooses to see the unseen. And so as we go through this life, as we continue on in this day, on this journey, we have to know that God sees us. The life God desires for us is to live in and through the power of the Holy Spirit. So God's grace can carry us. God's love can, can, can cascade through us. God's desires can take over us and his presence can surround us. Then and only then will we live the life that God desires for us, a life overflowing with him. And so, you know, we, we, we go through all of things and all of these challenges that life bring our way. And so now we find ourselves here in Acts 26, and regardless of what it is that has your back against the wall, that has your mind spinning, that have your, your, your emotions in a turbulent state. I find myself here in Acts 26 with Paul. And Paul, Agrippa said to Paul, thou art permitted to speak for thyself. And then Paul stretched forth his hand and made his defense. Paul said, I think myself happy. In spite of what he was going through, in spite of being confined, in spite of them not wanting to hear what it was that he had to say. And all Paul wanted to do was share some hope with them, allow them to know that the God that he had gotten to know would save them too. Ah, Paul went through some things. 
And, and, and yet Paul too was one time not believing, not understanding, not knowing the God that he had come to know. And so Paul said, even in the midst of what I'm going through, even in the midst of me just wanting to share hope and them not wanting to hear, you know, no, he goes on to say that, will you just listen? Will you just listen? So when they won't listen and, and when they won't get it right, you still have to think yourself happy. You have to be happy in spite of what life will bring your way, what it is that, that, that you're dealing with. And so today we see that Paul knew that he uh, was pray that God was praiseworthy, that God was praiseworthy regardless of what it was that he was facing, what it was that he was going through, what it was that the people didn't see. He could see what it was that God was trying to do. And God was using him then, but he's using each one of us now to spread the hope, to know that, guess what? To understand that we can be happy in this life, regardless of what it is that our minds think, regardless of what it is that our, 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 our lives face with our children, with our spouses, with our churches, with our, our schools. There are things in this life, but we cannot allow it to steal our joy. We have to say, in the midst of going through whatever it is that we're going through, I think myself happy. Because Paul was endowed with the power from on high, and so are you. Paul prayed in faith. So can you. Paul held on. That's the reason why we're here today, because we've been holding on to God's unchanging hand. Paul had the firmest expectation. Paul continued to believe what it was that the Lord had said. And just as the disciples had already been converted, conversion is not uh, 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 just a process. It, it is something that we, as, as Christians, have to know that uh, we have to exercise our faith in Jesus Christ, repenting of our sins. Yes, we, we, we've been baptized and we believe, but guess what? We still sin. And so we ought to repent of our sin. And we ought to no let God know that whatever it is that we're going through, that we can endure it through faith. Because guess what? In this conversion, we are going to have to bear up our prejudice, our hatreds, our self-righteousness, our unbelief, and, and know that we have to accept him. We have to trust him, and we have to love God with our whole heart. And so as we understand that it's not going to be easy to be happy, but at the end of the day, it is what God promise us that we can have. And so we have to stand on those promises knowing that whatever it is that we face in this life, that we can be happy. And so, you know, we, we find ourselves uh, in the Beatitudes, true happiness. Happy are those who know they're spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn, for God will comfort them. Happy are those who are humble. They will receive what God has promised. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. God will satisfy them fully. Happy are those who are merciful to others. God will be merciful towards them. Happy are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Happy are those who work for peace. God will call them his children. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are you when people insult you and persecute you and say all kinds of things about you. But just know because you have believed, because you are a follower of Jesus the Christ, be happy and be glad for the great reward is kept in heaven. 
And so guess what? Regardless of what it is that we go through down here on this earth, we have to know and believe that because God loves us, he stayed on the cross. Even though we may be spiritually poor, yeah, he stayed on the cross. Even though we, we don't always measure up to every promise it is that God has given us, uh, he stayed on the cross. Uh, he, 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 we, we, we may be prosecuted, prosecu oh, lied on. We may be talked about. We, we may be uh, in a place that is not a good place. But God stayed, allowed Jesus to stay on that cross that you and I, you and I would have a right to be in this place on today. That we would be able to, to show up on this mother's day with or without a mother, with or without our children, with our emotions all over the place. But because Jesus stayed on that cross and allowed us this opportunity to show up in this house on one more time. Ah, that, that, that he's faithful to us, even when we're unfaithful, that he is there for us, that we can call on him no matter of the time of day or night. He's there for us. And so we have to know that in the midst of everything that we go through in this life, this journey called life is meant to be lived. And so with the good, the bad, and the indifference, we have to know that God desires for us to be happy. And in the midst of being happy, he is going to fulfill his promises through us if we would just do what it is that he's called us to do. And that's to know him in the midst of prayer, in the midst of everything it is that life will bring our way. We thank and we praise God on today because he's worthy of every praise. He's worthy of every praise. He is truly worthy. Not because of who we are, but because of who he is. And we're his children. So on today, I say that whatever it is that stands in your way from being happy, whatever it is that keeps you separated from who God truly is, I ask that you give it to him. Don't just lay it down for a moment and pick it back up when you get ready to walk out the door. Give it to him truly so you can genuinely be happy. So you can live this life that he has given us. Life is short. We don't know the day nor the hour. But while we are here, let's enjoy our time. With every ache, with every pain, with every thought that's not like him, we got to learn to give it over to him and allow him to be God because he will do more than we can even ask or think. But it's up to us. It's up to us. And so at this time, if there's one that have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is the acceptable time. You can receive new life. You can walk in the newness of God. Jesus Christ died that you would be able to live for him. He died for each and every one of us that we would no longer live for ourselves, but for him. This Christian life doesn't happen without effort. I would not stand here and tell you that this journey is easy. But what I will tell you is that it's worth it. God's grace 
will continue to cover you. that you want to lay down at the altar. everyone that stand before me standing for prayer amen we thank God and we praise him this morning that we would come to this altar that we would allow God to do what it is that's needed and necessary in each and every one of our lives as we go to God in prayer Lord God, we thank you and we praise you this morning, Lord God. Your children, Lord God, have gathered at your altar, Lord God. Lord God, they have come forth and stepped out in boldness, Lord God, for prayer, Lord. Lord God, I ask that you would meet each and every one of them at their point of need, Lord God. Lord God, that you would allow them to lay down what it is that hinders them, Lord God what it is that keep them from being the best me they can be. Lord God, I would uh, ask right now, Lord God, that you would just draw them closer to you, Lord God. Lord God, that you would speak sweet nothings in their ear, Lord God. A language, Lord God, that only they would understand what it is that you're saying to them, Lord God. Lord God, that you would lift every burden, Lord God that you would break every yoke, Lord God, that easily besets them, Lord God. Lord God, and it keeps them from being who it is that you have called them to be, Lord God. Lord God, I ask right now that you would allow them to lay their burdens here at the altar, Lord God, not to pick them up, Lord God, but Lord God, to leave out this place, Lord God, free, happy, Lord God, Moving, Lord God, forward in the things that you've called them 
to do, Lord God. Lord God, I know that you have a work for each and every one of them, Lord God. So, Lord God, I, I ask that you would allow them to know that uh, you are there and that you see them and that you understand what it is that they have gone through, may be going through. But, Lord God, I ask that your promises would unfold before them, Lord God, that they would understand that, Lord God, you are there with them in every step of the way. That, Lord God, when they are weak, Lord God, that all they have to do is lean on you because you are strong, Lord God. And you are there, Lord God, to gird them up on every leaning side, Lord God. Lord God, whether it be the middle of the night or the middle of the day, Lord God, allow them to know that they can call on you, Lord God. And, Lord God, that you will answer, Lord God, that you will come to see about them, that you will be their father. Lord God, for each and every person that's in this house and under my voice, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to meet them at their point of need, Lord God. Lord God, allow them to know that you are God and there is none other. Lord God, that I, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, Lord God that you are Lord. And so on today, Lord God, I ask that your people, each and every one of us, would go out of here renewed, Lord God, refreshed, knowing, Lord God, that you are God and that we can give it to you and it will be well with our souls, that we will be free to live this life the way you have called us to live. Not with the, by the world standards, not by everything that we have to hear in the news and see with our eyes, but according to your word and your will, Lord God. Lord God, thank you for loving us. Even when we're unlovable. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Do what you need to do, Lord God, as long as you need to, to get us to where you would have us to be. Bless each and every one under the sound of my voice. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Won't you put your hands together and let's praise God for the woman of God who has been a blessing to us this morning. Amen. God is good. God is good. Reverend Frisbee. Yes, ma'am. You did it, girlfriend. And we thank and praise God for you. So on the behalf of the women of Third Baptist Church, we'd like to present this to you. May God continue to bless you, use you as you continue your walk with him and for him. And remember that the best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Reverend Bullock, Reverend Williams, where are you? Come forward, please. Where's Reverend Bullock was? Oh, there her was. <laughs> Oh, she and her boo dressed her like this morning. <laughs> Thank you, boo. <laughs> Women of God, walking together, working together to do what God has called us to do. And we're happy to do it. It get a little rough sometimes, but guess what? 
we're pressing on. Because we've learned that there's a blessing in our pressing. And we're going to keep on doing what God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to leave this place, but never your presence, we thank you, dear God, for what is to come. And we pray, Heavenly Father, and we know that thou will continue to walk, talk with us from henceforth and evermore. In Jesus' name, God, thank you. Thank you, ladies.